Hey everyone, thanks for coming back to Jared Manx. Sorry for part two taking so long. 2020 plus the holidays made for a really weird time. Uh, this year's definitely been both the tortoise and the hare. But enough with all that. Like I said, this is part two. If you haven't had a chance to go watch part one, I'm gonna leave a link in the description down below and you should definitely go watch that now. It's okay, I'll wait. Now that everyone's seen part one, let's get on to part two. These are all the materials and supplies and tools I use this go around. Some dollar store paint, basic acrylic paint, and some fancy paint. You don't need the fancy stuff. Next is some basic dollar store craft foam and some recycled cardboard box. Now some tools. We have simple paint brushes. Most of mine are dollar store paint brushes. These are more cake pop sticks that I got from the dollar store as well. And last, the tape. We have a roll of double-sided tape and a roll for masking off for the caution lines. This channel is about three things. Learning, teaching, and building. If we have some fun along the way, that'd be alright too. Now with all that out of the way, I'm gonna go make something. First we're going to start off with the landing that I didn't build in part one. This will go all the way to the left at the entrance to the subway. And yes, we have so many more tiles to make. Look at all those pretties. My original plan was to actually have this rotate so I could have different orientations, but that ended up not working out so well. The walls were a little warped, but that's okay. We put in some extra pieces and it helped straighten them out. Sadly, I didn't get any footage of making the trash can. Now we move on to the floor of the landing. I made this the same as I did the other floor, with cracks and tile. Make sure you prime your pieces. And finally, paint. I've been working on this project since August and I feel like it took forever to get to this point. I start with a simple base coat of acrylic black paint. And on other pieces, I used a white base coat. This would have been a whole lot easier if I had painted before I glued it together. Make sure when you're painting anything with cracks that you go multiple directions to do full coverage. I used a nice gray color for the flooring and all of the tile up the center pillar. I used a sponge to help with the texturing process. If you don't have a sponge, you can just wad up some paper and blot it just as I'm doing with the sponge. I was able to knock out this electrical box pretty quickly, so here I'm just doing a quick dry brush. That's when you get your paintbrush almost completely dry and only have just remnants of the paint. Here's more of the gray paint I used for the floor and the pillar. Using it on the handrails and the steps really helped tie in this piece. I didn't want the trash can to stand out too much, so I got a base coat of hunter green and a dry brush of a nice lime green. Now for the big boy, coating the floor. Like I said earlier, if you have lots of little cracks, make sure you do multiple passes. After the base coat was put down, I put in a nice couple of layers of dry brush with a lighter gray and an off-white. Now we put down some tape to help mask off for the caution lines. I used a beat up brush and dabbed on the paint to give it a spray painted look. Does anyone find this oddly satisfying? Gotta love those lines. Now we're back at base coating on the left wall. Now sometimes when you put a dark paint on top of a light paint, you're going to have to put on a couple of coats. No matter how thick it is, the white will still shine through. With the base coat down, now we're going to do some more dry brushing, just like we did on the larger platform. 
This lower part of the wall also gets the same paint treatment. Now let's do this base coat on the back wall, same as the others. And bring in that gray paint from the floor as well. I felt that the walls were a little too plain. I decided this subway train was going to be the blue line. I thought the blue with the gray and the yellow from the caution was a nice combo. And just like with the gray, this blue also needed two coats on top of the white. And the blue wraps around through to the landing. This was a big milestone for me, so here's a quick view of everything that's been done so far. And just like the gray with the rest of the piece, this gets a dry brush of lighter gray and an off-white. Next we're going to do some black washing on the grates that are going to be placed in the floor. Next I'm going to use the black wash on the rest of the small pieces that haven't been attached. Depending on the piece, I will put the black wash on and then take it off immediately. In the first video that I did, I put the black wash on and just let it dry. I wanted these pieces to be dirty, but not like outdoor dirty, just underground dirty. In a few other spots I added a couple more layers of the black wash to give it a grimy feel. Now we're adding the nameplates for the trash can and the recycling bin. These nameplates were pretty easy. Print out an image and glue it down to some thin cardboard. I then cut them out and used super glue to attach them. They were a little too clean, so I need to give them a quick little dry brush. I made an additional sign for the electrical box, the exact same way I did for the trash can nameplates. I'm also adding a black wash to this, as well as the tower. As you can see, I put on large quantities of this black wash and then just take it right back off. It helps add character without taking away from the paint you've already applied. Now we get to see the black wash on that white paint. I was scared at first, but just like with everything else, I wiped it right back down and the grime looks beautiful. Now make sure you get in every nook and cranny and leave some spots in the corners to make it look a little more dirty. Oh, just watch this magic. Just coat it and then wipe it off. What do you guys think? Here's where the double-sided tape comes in. I had a general idea how I wanted to attach the sign, but couldn't figure out a way to do it. Luckily, one of my followers is my grandfather-in-law, Gary, and he supports me through all of these endeavors and loves everything I do. Last time I was over at his house, he showed me this awesome tape, and I'm so thankful because the product turned out great. The Fifth Street sign is also just a printed picture on standard copy paper. Now I do like the sign, but I plan on replacing it, so right now it's only getting a pressured fit. Does anyone know the importance of 5th Street? If you do, leave a comment down below. And here's the exit sign. I attach it with hot glue to make sure that it has a solid bond. Here are those grates that I did a few minutes ago. All four of these will be placed in with hot glue as well. The last bit of paint is edging. This helps give a clean, sharp edge. 
Now with everything dry, I use hot glue to attach the electrical box to the wall. And with that guys, we are done. It's taken me a while to get through this, but thank you for being so patient. I appreciate it so much. Here's a little walkthrough. Thanks for joining guys. Well guys, that closes chapter two. I absolutely love this piece. But what do you think? What's your favorite part? Leave a comment in the description down below. Tell me what you liked, what you didn't like, something you'd like to see more of. And yep, I'm gonna say it again. Hit that like button, subscribe, comment, share with your friends on Facebook. I'm friends with a lot of you and I'm still not seeing the posts. If you need help with it, just ask. Like I said in the other videos, I've got a lot of projects I'd like to do and I've already started the design on chapter three. 2020 took a lot from a lot of us, but thankfully that year's done. Doing these projects and videos has been a great way for me to use this extra time that I have. And hopefully I've been able to give you guys a little bit of joy back in your lives. And with that, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time in chapter three. Bye guys.